the passage of time, we have shared your joy at the birth of your children, and proudly we have watched them grow. We've taken care of your health care needs during the good times and the not so good. Your parents and grandparents have depended upon us. Together we have shared the struggles and the wonders of life. At Octibaha County Hospital, we are celebrating 30 years of being your lifelong choice in health care. Uh, sorry for the tight quarters that we have this evening. I think we will have probably a very short meeting tonight. That the first thing is uh, the approval of the official agenda. We've gone through this with some uh, uh, revisions and uh, uh, consent items. Mr. McLaurin. Uh, Mr. Mayor, vote for your consideration tonight for possible placement on the consent agenda. Uh, on page two, page two. Uh, it is recommended in Roman numeral eight, number A, that the second public hearing on the sidewalk ordinance be postponed, given our cramped conditions and the fact that a number of individuals that wanted to hear and participate in that discussion were not able to be here. So it's recommended that that be postponed until the next meeting. <coughs> and thus, number 10A, the motion that might be associated with that to be postponed. Um, <coughs> items C and D, and these appear to be added at the last minute to the agenda, uh, would recommend that they be postponed till we have a full board present. We have considered all the projects relative to our street and drainage improvements as a full board. And a full board is not here, and here is yet another attempt to change the list, the approved list. Mr. Mayor, may I be recognized? You may be recognized. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I, I don't have any problem with um, delaying this, but you know, any member of the board can bring anything that he or she desires. So it's not up to any person to actually just critique what someone does yes, I am the requesting party for Roman number <coughs> 10C to be on the agenda, and, and what Roman number 10C speaks to Carver Drive. But I'm not going to get into that. But I just wanted to say it to the response to, to the, your tone of, of mentioning that I have no problem waiting to the full board. I had no idea the full board was not going to be here, and I'm a, I'm a proponent of bringing up these matters when a full board is present. And there have been a lot of instances when the full board not, has not been present. That this board has taken up things. As a matter of fact, this board took a number of things when I was out field back in 2006, but but I'm in agreement to wait until the full board, but I just wanted to say that, that, you know, this is not an attempt to bring something up in somebody's absence. I had no idea that there was not going to be a full board, but I'm in agreement to uh, to wait until <coughs> the full board is here. I think that'll make a helpful discussion as to what, if any, we need to say about it. Uh, thank you for your consideration. Remember, my suggestion was it is recommended that it be postponed the board to decide otherwise. If not, if you're gracious in uh, agreeing to let that be postponed until we get a full board. So item C and D recommended for the next meeting. The remaining items on page three recommended for consent. Page four, all items are recommended for consent except for three and four at the top of the page. We're talking about uh, utility agreements here. Uh, the city attorney has indicated that there are some changes that need to be made in those agreements uh, to uh, uh, make them conform to standard city agreements on this. So if we could substitute uh, for the language there a motion to approve uh, those agreements, enter into the utility service agreement, uh, subject to the city attorney's revision of the contract language to make it standard for city contracts. 
so we we it's recommended that we approve those things, but subject to contract provisions by the city attorney. Uh, I believe that merits some discussion. The actual agreement. So. Okay, would you then like to remove those yes, from the consent agenda? All the Cox is rec as uh, requested that items three and four be removed uh, to allow some discussion, and certainly that is our policy. Uh, item five, excuse me, I misspoke a moment ago when I said the remaining items. Uh, item five has all sorts of implications that we need to explore fully. It's recommended that that be postponed till the next meeting. Of the establishment of the electric department poli uh, deposit policy based upon credit rate. Am I right in asking that does three and four impact five at all, or can we do three and four separately from five? Three, three, three and four, four don't, don't have anything don't to do with five. Don't impact five. All right. Then I'd like to put those on the consent agenda mm -hmm. back if you don't mind. Three and four? Correct. Okay, Alman Cox has withdrawn his request that they be removed from the consent agenda and agrees with the placement of three and four at the top of page four. Back on the consent agenda, remember, what has been changed there is the approval of those agreements subject to uh, a redrafting, a revision, as may be the case by the city attorney to get the agreements to conform to standard city policy. The remaining items on the consent agenda on page four. Page five, all items recommended for placement on the consent agenda. Page six. Uh, uh, <coughs> page five? Yes. Um, item number six and seven. Uh, you would like to discuss those? I do not want them on the consent agenda. Okay, Alderman Perkins requests that items six and seven be removed and for consent from the consent agenda, and certainly uh, uh, we're, we're happy to uh, do that per our normal policy. So six and seven on page five are no longer on the consent agenda. Page six, all items listed there on the consent agenda, except of course the uh, proposed executive session items. Anyone else have any uh, corrections or amendments to it? Then do I hear a motion that we approve the uh, official agenda with the consent items and the items to be removed as otherwise? Uh, I would move that the agenda be uh, approved, uh, including the items uh, removed from the agenda and placed on the consent agenda. Do you have a second? Second. Motion to second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those are nay. Uh, tonight we will do yay and nay simply because we do not, uh, well, we do have video cam in, but we'll still do yay and nay. Okay. Uh, approval of the uh, board minutes. Main board has approval of March 24, 2009. Do we have a second? <coughs> no, second. Second. Motion is second. We approve the minutes. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Brings us up to uh, announcements and comments by the mayor. We have a second set. Okay, yeah, that's right. It's that palisized. Do we have approval of the second set of April the 7th? Second. Second. Do we have a second? Second. Motion with a second. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Announcements and comments by the Mayor and Board of Alderman. Uh, want you to notice that our February sales tax were up 16.34%, uh, which is great for an economy that has uh, been under a lot of pressure here. Our communities uh, hold steadfast in regard to its growth. We're very fortunate. Congratulations, Mr. Perkins, for being selected as an inductee into the Starville High School Hall of Fame. Famous, not fame, but famous. What a neat honor. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I uh, want to just say briefly that uh, thank you for the uh, recognition of this very prestigious honor, and I also appreciate those persons who were involved in nominating me and selecting me, and I am very grateful and, and thank you for that recognition. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, back on the first page, do we have the police officer? Nominated. Uh, okay. All right. That was the first thing I was hit with is just take the names off and not the right. So yes, you might be. I just wanted to take a moment to thank all the people that did come out tonight in regards to the sidewalk ordinance and in support of it. I apologize for any inconvenience over us not taking it up tonight due to cramped conditions, but hope that you'll come back to our next hearing on it. Thank you, Rachel. At this time, it brings us up to citizen comments. It's your turn to take three minutes of anything that you would like to complain or talk about to the Board of Aldermen. Do we have any citizens in the cramped space tonight that would like to come up and give a cramped three-minute uh, presentation? Go ahead, Mr. Hill. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is John Hill, and this is Brother Charles Johnson. We live at 153 Northside Drive. He lives at 154. We have a bad, 152, excuse me. We have a bad drainage of problem over there. When the downpour, the water just sits right in front of our door. All the debris from the hill come down. We live down on the bottom of the street. All of it running right down in front of our door. Uh, our honorable mayor, he was there, he saw it. Uh, 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 Mr. Cosby saw it, and uh, Mrs. Self seen it before. And I believe Brother Perkin here, he's seen it before. But, uh, he, uh, when he was alderman there, but uh, we have a bad problem now. And the other day, they came and uh, and put up a project here where they made a, they went into the pipe down underneath there, they tapped into it, put another pipe on top of it, cut that pipe off and put a lid on it. And what it's doing is it's collecting debris right there in front of my front door, and then on, uh, by my side door. And what it did then, instead of fixing the problem, they created another problem. And so we brought this to the board to see what you all can do. And then when the, when the downpour, you know, real hard, it fell under Mr. Oh, Mr. Johnson's yard and under his carpet. <coughs> Sometimes the streets get so full, it may be about a foot, foot and a half, you know, of water that's standing there in the street. And so we only have four drains. On uh, one on the uh, north side, and one on the south side, and two in the middle there, and they all stay stopped up all the time. If he's not cleaning them out, I'm cleaning them out. So we have no problem with that. And the water you run all over my carport, so when I be ready to get in the car, the water come all over my shoes. You're right across the street, Mr. Hill. Yeah, you're right. right here from here. And you, uh, <coughs> you by that Sarah, the Sarah, and I believe you looked at well, some pictures, but you can't so see it. We, we have done some work recently over there um, to try to alleviate some of the drainage problems. The, uh, the inlets were undersized over there initially when the development was put in. So we've added some curb cuts on the street there. I believe uh, Mr. Johnson uh, Mr. Right Johnson's you know, to allow that water to get in the flume instead of backing up into the street. Um, in regards to the upstream, what we're trying to do is divert some of that water from actually getting into the street and going into that pipe which discharges into the creek behind uh, Mr. Johnson's property. Now, we probably need to go out there and maybe make some fine-tuned adjustments to it, but I think we're, we're trying to trying to alleviate the drainage problem and uh, we'll, we'll keep working on it. And then do something agree if it goes on this behind the house too, the water just stand up here. Rusty is not going to be bad. In the summertime, it's so bad, right? You can hardly see that. Yeah, that's definitely a, a drain, a, a ditch that we need to put on the improvement list for sure. But you don't have any easements, do you? Well, we, and it's not on the board approved list. Right? But there's some, I've, I've walked walk back there, I've walked along a good section of that ditch, and there's some severe erosion. There's a lot of trees yeah. that are in the ditch, um, and it really does need a lot of work. I, I completely agree with you. All right, uh, another thing, may I ask, before, could you get with some of the citizens over there and then find out exactly what the problem is sure. instead of just coming and just doing something? So, you know, we sit down and get together, you know, and just talk about what can be done about it, you know, sure. to try to eliminate it. Mm -hmm.
Please hang up. I can just get your phone number. I'll be happy to call you. Uh, John Hill, 323 0731. Mr. Johnson, 323 16 AR. Thank you, Chad. Thank you. Uh, please. Yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, just wanted to be clear that I have been working with you with this problem. Yes, ma'am. And that this is a long-standing problem before exactly. I took over yes, the tenure as Iowa Alder. Yes, ma'am. I just want that understood. Yes, it was, it was, this is not something that developed in the last two or three years. No, it's been going on for a long time. It's been going on for, okay. for at least 15 to 20 years. Thank you. And so okay. Nobody okay. never, and, you know, they ain't tried to attempt to do nothing. And keep I complaining, keep complaining about it, but nobody never say nothing. Who'd you complain to? <laughs> the Aldermans. <laughs> we talked to Brother uh, Perkins about it, you know. Nothing was done about it, you know. So, ain't nothing we can do. So, so that one time we could just come here and bring it to y'all. We, we tried everything we knew how before we came here. I believe I encourage you to come here, did I not? So what? I encourage you to come. No, the really, I encourage myself. Good, <laughs> good, it's, time, good, good. it's time for a change, you know, yeah. you know. But you did say something about it, you know. We appreciate y'all coming. Thank you very much. Mr. Mayor, let me briefly say, Mr. Uh, Hill, and, Mr. and I, I have made efforts to get a lot of ditches, including yours done in the past, but I get resistant to this thing that there's no money. And, you know, I'm only limited to what I can do. So, yeah, so uh, once I prevent it, yeah, I state the case, that's all I can do. So once I get my best efforts, I, that's all I can do. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, we appreciate you coming. Thank you all. All right. Y'all have a good day. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. Any other citizens would like to make a comment? Yes, sir. Come forward. State you. your name. What war? Thank you. My name is Randall McMillan, Ward 5. I'm here on behalf of my wife, Whitney Hilton, and her capacity, both as an individual and in her capacity as the, the chairperson of this board appointed commission on disability. Whitney would like to have attended this meeting herself, but due to the fact that she has a disability herself, that she was excluded from this meeting due to its location on the second floor here of City Hall, which has no elevator. I wanted to come thank the City Board, the Board of Aldermen, Mr. Mayor, and Ms. Brule personally. Whitney spoke with you on the phone earlier, and she was assured that this will never happen again, and that all citizens, whatever their physical abilities, would welcome at Alderman meetings in the future. And I want to thank you, Ms. Sproul, for assuring her of that, and thank Mr. Mayor and the Board of Aldermen for that assurance as well. Thank you. Any other citizens at this time? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. My name is Sabrina Campbell, Ward 7. Um, I'm back regarding the um, proposed ordinance 0901, Chapter 54, Article 3. I'm sorry, Appendix A, Article 6, Section B. I know this is not on your agenda, but from the last two meetings, I did inform the board that this issue with this <coughs> wall is a safety issue for my family as well as other people in the community. Like I said, last a couple of weeks ago, before the last meeting, I backed out my driveway, could not see, and almost ran over a child. So, you know, that still makes me nervous every time I leave my driveway. So I am asking to the board to please, as soon as they can, to relieve the safety issues for my family, as well as safety issues for my neighborhood, to bring this particular ordinance back to the board with some kind of relief for me and my family, again, at night, it's very scary when you can't see anything. It's very scary when someone's running from behind your house and you can't tell who it is because there's a nine foot wall blocking it. Okay, and again, I want you to consider the fact that our home and us, we were there before the nine foot wall was. And it's also a public nuisance. Thank you. Anyone else would like to make a statement this time, public hearing? If not, I conclude the public hearings, we close them. It brings us up for public appearances. The first one we have tonight, Mr. Moreland, you're going to give a quarter report on parks and recs in court of state statute 21 Okay, if you look in your packet, though, what we put on the desk here, uh, we've got a lot of numbers and a lot of stuff to go over, but it's really it's right in front of you in black and white. Uh, I'm just going to bring you up to status on the, uh, the uh, new sports flex field in the gym. At voting of uh, or two and three down there today, we had a lot of good comments on it. People were really pleased with it. Said it was an asset historical, and I think it was. We uh, 
have taken over the building. We like a few little odds and ends, which you always do when you're building something new. Uh, but it uh, will be open to the public, and you have a brochure here, and you pack it, and I handed some out today uh, pertaining to tentatively we're going to have the grand opening and the ribbon cutting on May the 19th from 5.30 to 7.00. Uh, at that time, we'll have some, uh, we've got our two racquetball courts in there. Wilson Sporting Goods is sending a racquetball specialist here to put on a demonstration because a lot of, a lot of uh, not a lot of people are familiar with racquetball. Uh, you know, some of them are, but a lot are not, so we don't have lessons on that. Uh, the pools will be open. We've got the safety, as you know, they, you got to have the safety drains and all on them, that will be. And contrary to a lot of uh, people thinking and a lot of people running for office has campaigned on this, but I want to put it to rest. We are not, not closing J.L. King pool. A lot of people are saying that we are. A lot of people campaigning on the fact that we're going to close it. We are not. The numbers are down. We've got to try to build the numbers up. We are improving the pool over there. Uh, and and I, that we use that primarily for our group of people like the Boys Ranch and all that that comes over. Uh, that keeps the numbers. But the, if, if the people that live in that area would work with us and try to get the numbers there. We need numbers in the park. Uh, I think it's a pretty park over there. I think the land lay is good. Our ground people keep it up good. And, uh, but we just need to get the numbers over there. Uh, community garden we had, and it was, we were about with the community garden, just about like we was with Matt's dog park. Well, it's our dog park now, because it went over real good. If it had been a flop, it would have been mess. But uh, we have a lot of interest in the community garden. Now, I don't think we need to go out and build any canneries and all for eight by eight plot. I don't think we'll need to do that. But anyway, surprisingly, a lot of people think the parks is just for kids to play in. That's not the case. We have quilting. We have a, a lot of different things. And if you flip through your things whenever you have time, you'll see all of this. Uh, but. Uh, that's about all we have right now, unless you have any questions, and if you want to flip to it to uh, hear and ask anything, if not, uh, that's all I have for this time. Any questions? Go ahead. Is the Greensboro Center area being looked at as possible location for the community garden, or is there other? All right, some Josie circled over here. Okay. That's a that's a plot of land that we uh, wasn't using for anything. It's in a, a good location. It's in a safe area. Uh, <coughs> And uh, we got water there, we got the fence put up around it, and uh, it's in the little circle around Josie's circle over there off of uh, the boulevard. <clears throat> Any more questions? Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ackman, do you have, uh, you have a presentation tonight? Yes. Mr. Uh, Mayor, may I just kind of get yes. this thing started? And if you I'll would, that'd be fine. Um, just uh, quickly, you may remember several months ago we executed a wastewater treatment agreement with a leak utility to serve a uh, parcel west of the city of Starkville on Highway 12. Um, there's been some delays, and, and one of the, one of the conditions of our agreement is for they had to have a certificate of public convenience and necessity from the Public Service Commission to, to start sending the wastewater to us. Um, there's been some delays in getting that certificate. So uh, what Mr. Octuk would would like for the board to consider as an addendum to the agreement where he would send wastewater to us and pay us for treating the wastewater but agree not to charge the uh, any of the residents out there for uh, wastewater services and um, so with that I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, turn it over to, to attorney Faber who explain explain some of the le legal uh, aspects of the addendum and then Mr. Octude is here to answer any questions if, if you have. <coughs> Faber? We Doug and I have been in contact with the Public Service Commission to make sure it was legal for us to do that. And we have been assured by them that it is, and there's certain requirements that have to be met with DEQ. If you look at paragraph 5 of the addendum, that's the addition <coughs> that covers us and makes it legal for us to do that, provided that Mr. Ocknut complies with what's supposed to be done. So 
we can feel assured that we're in compliance with all regulations uh, if we go ahead and do this addendum the way that we did. It's going to be paragraph five. I don't know if you have the new uh, one. Y'all, <clears throat> then y'all did not receive a copy of the new one. The new agreement that they're asking you to approve. Um, sorry, it will be number five and number six uh, that I drafted that will be in compliance um, with the Public Service Commission and the DEQ. Would you read them for us, please? I will. Paragraph five says, prior to acceptance of any wastewater by the owner, the customer shall present to owner a copy of all applicable Mississippi Department of Environmental Quality permits for the operation of a sewer system up to and including financial viability sign-off, which has to come from the Public Service Commission itself. That is one of the requirements. Number six, which is in addition to what you have, is the customer will ensure that either the letter of credit that has been provided as an inducement to enter into this agreement will continue or customer will post in lieu of the letter of credit a bond in an amount termed by the city to be sufficient to protect the city to assure payment of any levies, fines, or expenses that may be assessed against owner. The customer will provide proof to the city owner before the expiration of the current letter of credit, which is April 27, 2010, of the continuing letter of credit or will post a necessary bond as required in this amendment. And that's because we have a, our requirements would, to accept the, we require an irrevocable letter of credit letter of credit that he has currently expires on that day. So I drafted this to allow him to either give us proof that the letter of credit continues to cover any fines and levies for non-payment, or he has to post a bond, whatever we deem sufficient, to continue to have us accept this wastewater. But both these were drafted <coughs> by me, both these are uh, paragraph five and six. Do we have any discussion or uh, questions asked from the Alderman? Rodney, from the yeah. picture, other than the legal agreement that that needs to be executed, can you explain what the city's responsibilities and are as it relates to sewer that's outside of the city limits? Well, basically to sum it up, the, if they can get it to us, we have to accept it. Well, but we can set the terms of how we're going to accept it as long as they're legal, which is what we did with paragraph five of this agreement. To sum it up, that's it. We have to accept it. We set the terms of how we're going to accept it in compliance with state law, and that's what we've tried to do. We've also tried to assure that if for some reason that we don't get into a situation that we've been in before that the board is very aware of where we're accepting wastewater, we're not getting paid for it, and the customer shuts down and says, we're not going to pay. Well, we're required to continue to take it. This posting of the bond and this, this letter of credit covers us so that we don't get into a situation that you were all familiar with where we're owed several thousand dollars that we're having to go and collect now. And so this is our drafting to try to remedy those two type situations. But the state, as you said, the state requires us to... We, if to they can get it to us... It's the interlocal agreement with Mississippi really State. Federal. Yes, yeah, federal. It's a federal requirement. It's a federal treatment plan. Yeah. It's okay. a federal yeah. requirement, and we have an interlocal agreement yeah. between us and MSU. I just expect someone's going to ask us, why are we doing this? And, and yeah. that's part of the but answer, and the city's protecting itself. We're protected, we're protected right. by these addendum to the agreement so that if we get in a situation where, and not casting any dispersion right. on him, but you're all aware with the situation I'm talking about, we won't have that anymore. We're gonna have a letter of credit and we're gonna have a, uh, a bond, either that or a bond post. We have a letter of credit right now that's good through um, 2010, whatever that date was that I read, October, I think, 2010, with a FDIC insured bank. So do we need a motion or anything from this board to accept this? We do to go on and move it forward, and I would move for approval of the addendum to the wastewater service agreement between the city of Starville and Elite Utilities. That addendum that the city attorney read, not the one that was uh, uh, placed in the packet, the revised addendum. Second. We have a motion and a second. 
Any further discussion? If not, we'll vote. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. Passes. Thank you, gentlemen. We need to get a copy of that. Brings us down to board business and considering it. Consideration may report us to the Golden Triangle Regional Airport. I think we had one person to apply for that. That was Mr. Frank Childs, who has been uh, uh, serving the term, the remainder of the term of uh, uh, Stuart Vance, I believe. And he's the only one to supply it. I would move the reappointment of Frank Childs to the Golden Triangle Regional Airport before. Second. We have a motion and a second. All, the, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. The second item is a planning and zoning for Ward 3, and we have Mr. Jerry Emerson, I believe, that has applied for that. Uh, for reappointment, and I would move the reappointment of Dr. Gerald Andrew Emerson to the Planning and Zoning Commission to represent Ward 3. Second. We have a motion to second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. Mayor, I'd move approval then of Planning and Zoning Commission vacancy in Ward 5 and we move approval of Robbie Coble for a six year term commencing on July 1st, 2009. Second. Motion is second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. Uh, Mayor Board, I would make move approval of the reappointment of Pete Melby to the Park and Rec Commission of Ward 4. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. Brings us down to, uh, to page five, three is all consent. Page four is uh, consent with the exception uh, that we uh, were Talking about table request the board authorization for the establishment of the departmental deposit policy to include the listing of new credit ratings based upon deposit accounts. Uh, I believe that's where we are with that, unless I've missed something. That's correct. <coughs> we're postponing it. Yeah. It's been taken. Okay, we're taken. All right. Uh, we had. Uh, Two items on the personnel will be removed for discussion. Approval of advertised full position engineering assistant in the engineering department. That's the first item. Mr. Perkins, I believe you asked for that to be removed. Is that right? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Engineer, uh, does your uh, job description call for a uh, civil engineering degree? Or what degree do you have? My job description? I mean, yes, sir. This engineering assistant? No, no. The, the, what type of engineering degree do you have? Your civil, civil okay, uh, Mr. 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 Mayor, let me just briefly uh, speak to my opposition to this request. Um, the um, city engineer, in all due respect, is seeking to have this position upgraded to an assistant uh, engineer. Uh, the minimum qualification would be upgraded to a equivalent to a bachelor's degree from an accredited college or university with a major course work in civil engineers. So uh, Mr. Kemp has already attested that he has a civil engineering uh, degree and I don't know why it'd be necessary for us to have two civil engineers in this department. Uh, secondly, uh, the uh, position would cause for an increase in, in salary uh, with this reclassification from a range of what he's recommending from forty-three dollars to $48,000 and it's currently paid at $34,330. And as a matter of trying to save city money, my personal preference uh, would be that you know we have a, a contract engineer on uh, on staff, and you know who's our former city engineer, and he's uh, well versed in these matters. It seems like if we need some additional work, we could uh, perhaps discuss more hours with Mr. Webb. And uh, and speaking of Mr. Webb, um, you know when he was here uh, with the city of Starkville, he had a multitude of duties. Um, was barely making fifty or sixty thousand dollars a year, and, and all these things that we're advertising for tonight, they're all under one hat. I mean, he worked extremely hard to get all these things done, and and it seemed like we we're just enlarging bureaucracy by having another person with uh, with a major in civil engineering. You know, and it seemed like 
from time to time we get all these get many requests here lately to maybe reclassify, upgrade, and you know, and the city employees haven't had a pay raise in a long time, and we keep doing this, they, uh, they may not be seeing one uh, anytime soon. So I, I think that this position is is really an overkill, and I think uh, maybe the city engineer uh, probably could just relook at um, um, doing some of these things on his own, or. Uh, Get, uh, putting some of this work out to Mr. Webb, who's uh, on staff at this time. So I think that this is really beefing up uh, the uh, city payroll unnecessarily with uh, an increase in salary up to forty-three dollars to $48,000. And, and, and Mr. Mayor, at the same time here, let me go ahead if I can speak to, we can vote separately, let me speak to number seven. And, uh, and, I, and I have no objection to someone inspecting the streets as regard to the improvement roadway, but again, uh, when Mr. Webb was here for um, for a multitude of years, he, uh, he um, as far as I recall, did all this work on his own. We didn't have a, a separate person doing this, and one person doing this, and Mr. Webb just took those responsibilities very gracefully, you know, with a salary of less than what we pay our current engineer. So, you know, I think we just need to try to buckle down with the staff that we have. and. You know, and I think if, if it gets to a worst case scenario, the, the existing you know, engineers should be able to do all these things at the rate that we pay them or, or is paying here. So I just wanted to um, express that and I uh, think that, you know, we need to try to conserve money for our city every way we can. And I think we could do that if we win in that regard. So I just want to express that, Mr. Mayor. Any other one, Ken Barnesk, comments in regard to that? I'd like to suggest when Mr. Webb started, I think we only have a population of about 12, 14,000. We're up to 20, probably 22, 23,000 people now. I'm not sure if the duties have expanded. Mr. Uh, do you, Ed, you want to speak in regards to the need for, I guess, uh, an assistant with a higher degree than what we had before? Well, in the, past, in the, the previous uh, position only required experience doing CAD with uh, computer type work. And um, I think with the, with the amount of projects that we've taken on here and will undertake in the next four to five years, uh, you know, we have a four year capital plan to do in between 12 and 15 million dollars worth of projects. We either we're facilitating those or we're uh, doing them uh, on maintenance projects. I really, in order to get all these done in the time that the board wants, I really need some help in order to kind of facilitate these projects. The difference in an engineer versus someone with a CAD experience is they're going to have a background and experience doing design, engineering design related activities. So on some of the smaller projects, they would be able to do some of the design and, and do some of the construction drawings. I mean, I feel like. Um, of course, it would be all under my supervision, but it would enable us to do a lot more um, in-house and would enable us to, to do things a lot quicker. Um, I, I just, you know, I, we are, this is beefing up the staff, but we're really beefing up the amount of projects that we're trying to do too. Um, so I think that in order to meet those expectations, it's something that's really necessary. Move approval of the request. Second. Second. In further discussion, I'll just make a couple yeah. of things. Uh, uh, it was described that this was an assistant city engineer. It is not. It's an engineering assistant. It was also represented that this would be a bachelor's degree in civil engineering, which is not exactly what the job description calls for here. You can have a bachelor's degree and have, ta have taken a lot of civil engineering courses which is what it says here, but not have a bachelor's degree in civil engineering. Uh, but it's engineering assistant, not assistant city engineer. Right. And, and, and they wouldn't, this is not also a requirement for their professional engineering license either. It's just that, right. um, just that degree. Just that they uh, be able to do the FD exam right. and pass it, which is the very basic. Right. Okay, we have a motion for the approval of number six and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Nay. Francis to item number seven, which is, uh, I would think, was asked to be removed, Mr. Perkins. Uh, I haven't discussed all this. We already addressed all right. address. So do we have a motion on number seven? I'll move approval. A second. 
Motion is second that we approve number seven. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. Nay. So bring us down to page six. <coughs> and I believe it, uh, all that is consent. Then bring us down to executive session. Uh, but first, Mr. May, I would approve, uh, uh, move approval of all the items placed on the consent agenda. Approval of the consent agenda. Second. Motion is second. We approve the items on the consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. It brings us down to executive session. Do I hear a motion? We're going to close session to discuss the executive session. I move that we go into closed session to discuss whether or not the executive session All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. Thank <laughs> you.